All right, I'm going to do another run through, and this time Philippians chapter two. And and you know I'm kind of just doing this just to to read the scriptures myself. I'm just recording it as I'm doing it, but you know uh, I just haven't been reading through the scriptures lately like I should. And um, you know I, I only read scriptures, you know, studying for particular doctrines and things like that. You know, I don't really not really getting into the scriptures as you know, we should. So anyways, Christ's example of humility, this would be a great passage then. Uh, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of, and mercies. And you know, it's been so long since I've just been reading through the scriptures that I don't even remember a lot of, you know, the sections and what's in different chapters and stuff. Some of the main ones, you know, that obviously we remember and stuff I do, but, um, you know, like Romans 7, dealing with Paul's uh, struggle, you know, um, you know, being human still, and, you know, just stuff like that, because I've done expository studies on, you know, obviously, First Corinthians chapter 2, and so forth, but Philippians, I don't really remember a lot specifically of what's in there, but anyways... So if there's any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this be. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I reference that at the end of chapter two in First Corinthians, how he speaks about you know the mind of Christ, and you know here he says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus." Um, so he speaks of us having the mind of Christ multiple times, and uh, basically this is you know. It says Christ's example of humility, and this is a great example for us to read, to, to learn, to memorize, and to follow, to um, esteem others better than ourselves, to be humble, to look not to, you know, just our own things, but to the things of others, to be mindful of others, you know, in prayer, and in deeds, and uh, so... Let this mind be in you, which was in, also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And so, um, you know, there's a lot there. And so it's like even Jesus is glorified by the Father, even though, you know, he came as a servant. And, uh, you know, that we are to live by that example. And what, you know, what greater example could there be than Jesus Christ himself, who is God, but he took on flesh, uh, took on humanity, and he, uh, you know, served God and served others until his death, uh, you know, that's the greatest, Jesus is, you know, our greatest example, and, um, so yeah, we're to live, live as him, uh, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. So we're constantly reminded to be selfless, you know, uh, the opposite of selfish, and, you know, that's the way that the world is. You know, you can see that a lot in our everyday lives, how other people are selfish. And, you know, we have those tendencies ourselves. We are human. You know, we were born with a sinful nature, but yet we are 
saved and you know we're freed from sin and uh, you know we're free from that bondage of sin and uh, we strive to be selfless and you know we act in ways and do things that surprise uh, non-believers uh, with our you know selfless acts and uh, you know it's interesting it makes me think of Calvinism and stuff too and how uh, some say that you know non-believers can't do anything good in the sight of God and uh, you know, some people say that and you know from the books that I read about Dave Hunt he says you know that's not true because there are people non-believers who do you know self-sacrificing deeds you know um, if somebody, you know, somebody, a non-believer could, you know, um, risk their life for somebody else in danger, you know, get in front of a moving vehicle or something to save a child and, you know, risk their own life. And so, you know, these are things that, you know, um, that are good, you know, that, but anyway, it's kind of going off topic there, but it just made me think about that. And, um, but, you know, we strive each and every day to to be, uh, you know, less selfish. Um, lights in the world. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And there's the fear and trembling, which I mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We see that phrase a lot, and that's an interesting phrase. And I don't think it means what our mind instantly tries to think that it means. Uh, you know, being afraid, and uh, it's more of a figure of speech. And work out your salvation. This is a highly controversial passage, you know, where people who would deny eternal security or somebody who would teach work salvation, they might use this as a proof text. I've talked about it before, and I was actually thinking about it earlier, just randomly thinking about this verse. You know, I think I've, I've talked about it before, and I don't know exactly what I said on before, but what I'm thinking of now is, uh, you know, I know I did say that, you know, it doesn't have to do with it doesn't have anything to do with trying to earn your salvation, but I think that this has to do with your walk in your salvation, your walk with the Lord as a believer. Um, you know, continue your walk, you know, with reverence towards the Lord. And, um, you know, not, uh, not with, uh, pride and stuff, but being mindful, um, of your faults and being mindful of others. Uh, so this is talking more about, you know, your walk in salvation. Um, you know, he's, he's saying to continue the example of the Lord. So for it is, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Uh, this could be a verse that Calvinists can use as a proof text. But, you know, also in chapter 1 of Philippians, he mentioned how, you know, he who begun a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. And then here we have, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I think there's kind of some similarities between those two verses. It's God that worketh in you, um, so do all things without murmurings and disputings. And you know, so God helps us to serve him, and that's, you know, our calling as Christians, is to do his good pleasure. And, uh, you know, those are... Like, those are interesting verses that I would like to look over in more detail again, even though I have before. But, you know, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. Okay, sons of God referencing believers, not angels. 
without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. It's a very interesting verse. That very much sounds like today, huh? You know, uh, all this crazy stuff going on in the world, just how society is changing. Uh, but yet, in a way, it's always been the same. It's always been wicked and perverse. Sometimes it seems like it's getting worse than it, than it has been, and maybe it is. But uh, Christians are the light in the world. And obviously, you know, there's parables that Jesus spoke of that. We see that in Scripture a lot. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Jesus Christ, or the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoices, rejoice with me. So, there's a lot of interesting things just in this small passage here, verse 12 through verse 18. Uh, you know, he wants, he wants the people who he preached the gospel to, he wants the church, you know, the people that he's helped lead to the Lord, to continue to serve the Lord, to continue to live upright, to be righteous and holy in the sight of God, and so that they remain blameless, and um, so that the world sees them, you know, as the light. And uh, he rejoices in that. And, uh, you know, that makes, you know, that's the fruit of his labor, seeing that and knowing of that, that, his, uh, that the believers, that he's led to the Lord, are remaining steadfast in the faith and you know in holiness and leading others even to the Lord and uh, so Timothy and Epaphroditus Epaphroditus verses 19 through 30 but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state for I have no, I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Jesus Christ. But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the Father he hath served with me in the gospel. He's very close to Timothy. And he, uh, you know, he's giving a high report of Timothy, saying that, you know, he's not like other men who, you know, are think of themselves, um, you know, he, he is a follower of the Lord, he is a fellow brethren in the gospel. For therefore I hope to send presently so soon as I shall see how it will go with me, but I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. So, you know, we would want to be spoken of as Paul speaks of Timothy. You know, we would want to be, uh, you know, someone that, you know, brothers and sisters can trust and, and know uh, that we really mean to serve the Lord. So, verse 25, yet I suppose it necessary to send you to Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger, and that, and he that ministered to my wants. So, companion in labor, brother, fellow soldier, messenger, ministered to my wants. So, um, very interesting, all those labels here that are given to Epaphroditus. Again, he's speaking very highly of that guy as well. For he longed after you all, and was full of heaviness. Full of heaviness. Well, that's kind of a figure of speech, just like the fear and trembling. Um, you know, what does it mean that he was full of heaviness? You know, um, because he had heard that 
that she had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Um, and so, I set him therefore the more carefully that when you see him again he may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord of all gladness and in such reputation, and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service toward me. Yeah. <clears throat> he was full of heaviness, you know, he was depressed, uh, he was brought low, uh, you know, because we think of heaviness as sinking, being down to the ground. This was his feelings, this was his emotional state. Um, so yeah, he speaks really highly of Timothy and Epaphroditus. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't want to ramble on anymore, but this is a really good verse, uh, you know, the whole Lights in the World passage. If you looked at a lot more deeper, but uh, you know, basically in the first two verses here, I mean, twelve and thirteen, working out your own salvation, fear and trembling. You know, those are controversial, and God with worketh in you, and you both to will and to do it His good pleasure. Uh, basically, because of those two, I guess. Anyways, thanks for watching. God bless. I'll continue on to chapter 3 and chapter 4.